disable the video? I am unable to switch on the video. So. Okay, okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Oh, thank I think you. Samit busy. Uh, today was uh, yeah very busy. I was start. I started at eight o'clock. I just finished sign out, wow. and I ran to the sixth floor. My office is in the seventh floor. I okay. just ran to the sixth floor and sat in the conference room. Wow. And yeah, so we have people like on the attendees, we have different people. So, okay, great. Mm. So how is work wise busy? And you must be having a busy day, right? Uh, work, well, I'm off service today and tomorrow, oh. mm -hmm. uh, which was pretty uh, convenient for our talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, great, normally, yeah. yeah, normally clinical work wise, we are not a very busy institution, but uh, uh, academic wise, normally yeah, it's a like lot of busy. work. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that takes a lot of time. I was off yesterday. Uh -huh. I and that yesterday was my research time off, mm -hmm. but I couldn't do much. I was like sleeping all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you so should, tired. Sometimes you are, you are yeah. human, sir. You yeah, have to I mean, I. <laughs> tried in the morning but it didn't really yeah. happen i did let it go yeah yeah you can yeah i mean you have to rest right i mean yeah uh, last night i slept a lot as well yeah i do sleep a lot i mean my sleep cycle is defect i mean is abnormal but um, i sleep a lot yeah 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 we have people are joining I think there are 250, uh, am I correct, Anita? Like, register, uh, yes, uh, yes, sir, that is right. Mm -hmm. People, People registered. Yeah. Joining, so it's like yeah. increasing since we have mentioned the time is seven o'clock in Indian time. Yeah. Normally we do it in at eight or nine, right? The attendance a little low when it becomes nine o'clock, people having kids and all. Yeah. We can only see Dr. Gul. Nobody can, he cannot see anyone, right? It's the uh, video yes, is uh, uh, No problem. Yes. Don't worry. Don't worry. As long as we see the screen properly and there should not be any technical glitch on that. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Uh, we have one more minute. So you think we should give like another two, three minutes because people are joining in. So far, we have 18. Um, no, people are, yeah, one by one, they're joining. The number is increasing. I'm fine. Hmm. Is it okay? If it's, um, uh, like... Of course, of course, sir. yeah, I'm fine. You do see some GI as well, right? Along with GU? Uh, yeah, um, like 20, 30%. Oh, but just that's the a... middle GI. I don't do, I don't do like um, liver, pancreas. Mm -hmm. But 20, 30% yeah. is quite a lot. GI services. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm trying to merge more GU to our program, which mm -hmm. it is so far successful. I mean, mm -hmm. I started with probably 40% GI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I merged some of the affiliating hospitals. Plus, now I'm going to get some more additional GU from another hospital. Oh, wow. 
then you have so, a lot you'll be busy yeah but i mean it's, i mean it's what i do there's no such thing as uh you know more gu right and how about faculty like you are the only attending or you have a bunch we of have two people? faculty uh, two, but okay. yeah my colleague uh, she's mm -hmm. also gu and medical renal trained oh she's basically running the show for the medical kidney oh that's a lot of work the reports are yeah she is yeah it's a, it's a different uh schedule than yeah. you know what I'm used to it's a different thing right and they have frozen section and they have this emergency on call and yeah we all, we, all got, we all yeah we all have these calls uh i have um probably five or six a year on mm -hmm. call like mm -hmm. two, a, a entire week mm -hmm. also five or six weeks of frozen i think mm -hmm. right and those frozen weeks are crazy weeks. I mean, you always. Yeah, it's always. It's, and are you always planning to crazy. start a fellowship? Like uh, the fellows do rotate with you, right? Such yes, pass fellow. Do. We have one fellow, um, mm -hmm. uh, but she's not like GU specific. We don't have a GU fellowship. Mm -hmm. So she, she's a search path person. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, she is basically uh, specialized in GI, breast, mm -hmm. and GU. Okay. Hey, you know, uh, Dinesh is Dinesh Pradhan. He is moving mm -hmm. to Nebraska. Really? Yeah. Okay. He just got offered a position like a couple of days ago. He's Congratulations. To, yeah. Yeah. It's the visa thing is going on, but yeah, you officially accepted that. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, wow, can't wait to him. He's an amazing person. Anybody yeah. should have him. <laughs> yeah. he is the paper writing machine <laughs> yeah, right. like, uh, he's an amazing person yeah he's a great guy we like two more minutes it's three minutes after seven so we'll of course start. yeah Because I see a lot of pathologists and Dr. Kaushal is there. If you want to say hello to Seema, she's there. Hi, Rakshima. Can, can you, can she hear me? Hi, Seema. I think she's there. I saw her name. She was here. Yeah. I think I can do this and she can talk. Dr. Yeah. Kaushal, can you hear me? Yeah, you have to... Yeah, C wrote like. Yeah. Oh, Luca. Luca, Luca is, is also Luca. there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, thanks. Can you, thanks for coming. I, I think they're all, um, Anita, they're all muted. Hi, Anita. I think we should give them. Yes, sir. We, should, we have to give them allow access to talk, sir. Only yeah. then they can. Yeah. yeah. Please unmute everyone. So that if you get a lot of noise, then we can, once um, Dr. Agul starts the talk, we can uh, mute them and they can talk in the end. But now sure. you can. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hi, sure, Dr. Kushal. Sure. Can you hear us now? Hi, 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 Mahmoud. How are you? Hey. Good to see you. Good to hear yeah, you. Nice yeah, nice to see you. How are you? How are things? I'm, I'm good. Long time. Yeah. I missed meeting yeah, you at Aska. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. The last time was in 2020. Uh, yeah, 2020. Yeah, yes, I remember yes, that. Yes. Yeah. Looking forward to next year, definitely. Uh, yeah, maybe if you're please, coming please to India come. before that. Yeah. yeah. yeah Her daughter is, did extremely well in the 10th grade. Yes. <laughs> and the reason I took off actually paid off. She scored perfect score, 100 out of 100 in the yeah. subject. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. This is a very bright Hello. kid. Luca is also here. Hey, Luca. Yes, how are yes. you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, nice to meet you, Mamut. Uh, so much we, we kept we kept in touch uh, on Twitter many times, uh, yes. and it was great. Your uh, uh, geo cases are fantastic. <laughs> Thanks so much. I really like your post as well. Although you are posting many non-geo things, but I'm learning a lot from it. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> And Luca, we have Dr. Kossel. She is a professor at All India Institute of Medical Sciences. We are in the same city. Nice to meet you, uh, Kossel. Yeah, Seema. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Luca is from Italy. Yes, yes, I know. We shared uh, this thing, the survey together. I remember. Yeah, you have. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So the papers will be out soon, yeah. 
Yeah, everybody is eager <laughs> for that. So, yes. Anita, you want to start? I think we have now almost uh, close to 50 people, so we can start and people will gradually join in. Uh, sure, sure. So, let's start the webinar. So, thank mm -hmm. you. A very good evening to one and all present here. So I welcome you all to the webinar on morphologic clues of molecularly defined renal carcinomas organized by International Association of Oncology and International Association of Renal Research. What on is very Sorry. Uh, it, no issues. Uh, on behalf of the entire organizing team, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our esteemed speaker, and the participants who have joined the forum. I can assure you that this will be a session that would be highly informative to all the participants present here. International Association of Oncology is one of the renowned professional association meant for research and development in the fields of medical oncology. Uh, IAO is an international forum for researchers, academicians, doctors, and practitioners for sharing the knowledge and innovation in the field of healthcare and life sciences. IAO brings together worldwide researchers and professionals and encourages intellectual development and provides opportunities for networking and collaboration. The, pri the primary goals of International Association of Renal Research are the professional advancement of doctors, medical practitioners, and young researchers, as well as the general advancement of the organization for nephrology and diabetes research. The integrity, continuous learning, innovation, and leadership and commitment to medical professionals are the guiding concept of ISRR that will ensure better development in the future. The International Society for Renal Research seeks to promote and advance the scientific understanding of kidney diseases and its treatment through the dissemination of research findings. Uh, I would like to welcome the esteemed speaker for the day, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Akul, Assistant Professor of Pathology and Director of Genito uh, Urinary Pathology, Albany Medical College, New York, USA. After graduating from medical school in Turkey in 2011, Dr. Mahmoud moved to the United States to pursue his career as a pathologist. He worked as a lead technolo technologist at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center and was matched to the University Hospital's Cleveland Medical Center Department of Pathology. Since the initial months of his residency, he was dazzled by the urologic pathology. After his autonomic and clinical pathology residency and becoming both certified pathologist in 2018, he had a year of surgical pathology fellowship at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in 2019, and then a year of urologic pathology fellowship at Indiana State University 2020. Since the end of his training, he has been working at Albany Medical Center, Department of Pathology, as an assistant professor and has been directing the urologic pathology service for two years. The main research focus of Dr. Mahmoud Akul is kidney neoplasms. He has also published more than 50 research articles in various reputed journals in, uh, in the field of pathology. He is an avid reviewer and has a number of presentations in USCAP, CAP, and ASCP. On behalf of International Association of Oncology and International Society for Renal Research, I would like to take this moment to express our heartfelt gratitude to our expert speaker for taking the time to share your vast knowledge in this vital topic despite your busy schedule, busy schedule sir. I kindly request Dr. Mahmoud Akul to take over the session, sir. Please. Thanks a lot, Anita, for the kind introduction. And thank you so much for IAO and everyone who is joining to our uh, presentation. Today, I'm going to talk about a very um, challenging topic in the entire surgical pathology, which is uh, molecularly defined renal carcinomas. It's a new chapter in the next, uh, in the uh, latest WHO, which was just uh, released last year. Um, it will be a pathology heavy presentation. Um, I can do my best to, you know, tell you about the treatment options, but uh, I don't know much about those. And I think it is not 
um, there yet. I mean, it is not a, a maturing um, area, you know, treating molecular defined renal carcinomas. We still need evidence and clinical trials on this, but uh, today uh, it will be mostly on how to diagnose uh, molecularly defined renal carcinomas. So when, when I was, uh, by the way, I have no relevant financial conflict of interest. And if you have any questions and feedback, you can just uh, shoot me an email. I, I'll, I'll happy to respond. When I was uh, preparing this talk, I was trying to find an abstract idea on how to show, uh, you know, uh, our listeners regarding the importance of the molecular background. And I found an amazing artist. Uh, her name is Kumi Yamashita. She's a Japanese American um, uh, artist and her work is mostly on light and shadows. Um, and I just uh, realized that it actually can be applicable to, um, you know, impact of the molecular landscape. If we think that this image formed by those uh, figures is the morphology, the figures are actually genetic alterations. And morphology, which is mostly what we do in surgical pathology, is the most important, um, you know, evidence for us for diagnosis, uh, which means um, morphology, you know, following the morphology, catching up the morphology clues can help us uh, finding distinct genetic alterations. Uh, over the years, uh, how we diagnose kidney tumors have evolved, but uh, I mean, we are using many different uh, terminologies in classifications and diagnosis of kidney tumors. We can use, uh, and we mostly use, predominant cytologic and architectural features. For example, clear cell RCC is a morphologic terminology. Chromophobe RCC is a morphologic terminology and papillary renal cell carcinoma is a morphologic terminology. We use tumor location to classify renal neoplasms such as collecting duct carcinomas and smart b one deficient renal medullary carcinomas. Uh, they are basically located at the uh, medullary, uh, renal medulla. Sometimes background disease uh, can help us classifying the tumor uh, in the such as in the example of acquired cystic kidney disease associated renal cell carcinoma. And um, recently, I mean, it is not super recently, but uh, over the years, increasingly, we are using um, defining molecular background. So there is a distinct mutation, and we use that mutation to uh, characterize the tumor. You can see this uh, crazy change over the years. Over the last uh, 70 years, the kidney tumors have uh, rapidly evolved. These are what you see is a graph uh, of the um, classification of uh, renal tumors. In the good old days, in the first WHO, uh, I couldn't believe when I, you know, uh, see that, that uh, you know, uh, data at the first time, but there were only three diagnoses. It is either carcinoma or adenoma or others. But especially um, after the year 2004, uh, we started having the impact of particularly molecular um understanding, increased molecular understanding in the classification of kidney tumors. And now we are talking about more than, you know, 30, 40 different uh, subtypes of uh, renal tumors. This is the latest classification of uh, renal cell tumors, according to WHO fifth edition. And again, uh, we are going to focus on this specific chapter. It is for the first time in WHO, uh, there is a, you know, specific um, chapter uh, with the name of molecular defined renal cell carcinomas. But if you look at the renal tumors in general, most of the tumors, they actually have a distinct, uh, almost signature molecular alteration. For example, clear cell renal cell carcinoma, VHL mutations are almost always there, and it is a signature mutation. It's a canonical mutation. On the other hand, if you look at the papillary uh, renal cell carcinoma and papillary adenoma, you will see uh, additional chromosomal uh, changes like uh, chromosome 7 and chromosome 17, uh, Y chromosome loss and MET mutations. Oncocytomas, you will see uh, CC and D1 rearrangements in about uh, you know 30% of them. Chromophobe renal cell carcinoma and um, mucinous tubular and spindle cell carcinoma will have um, 
multiple chromosomal losses. So it is almost always there, which means these are actually distinct, um, you know, mutational alterations. But why don't we use those molecular alter alterations to name them? Well, because uh, the biggest difference between these, all the other kidney tumors and molecular defined renal carcinomas is in this chapter, and we are going to talk about that in detail, documentation of molecular alteration is required for the diagnosis. So that's, the, that's probably one of the most important lessons that we have to get in this lecture. To diagnose TF3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma, you have to have uh, documentation of the TF3 rearrangement, although in clear cell, you don't need that, right? Uh, you, you just have, you, you just can go with morphology plus some very limited immunohistochemical assays. So that's the mo most, um, that's one of the most um, major changes in the new WHO. What we are going to talk about uh, today is, uh, we are going to talk about TFE3 rearranged renal, renal cell carcinomas. We are going to talk about TFE B altered renal cell carcinomas, alloc mutated renal cell carcinomas, fumarate hydratase deficient renal cell carcinomas, succinate dehydrogenase deficient renal cell carcinomas, alk rearranged renal cell carcinomas. Um, I'm not going to talk about smart B1 deficient renal medullary carcinomas because this is our good and old renal medullary carcinoma. There is not much change, uh, you know, regarding the uh, diagnosis or morphology clues. Everybody knows that, you know, the vast majority of those patients will have um, uh, some sort of hemoglobinopathy, most likely a sickle cell trait. And uh, you can actually, in the diagnostic uh, workup, you can, and you should at the moment, uh, show the loss of SMACB1 by either immunosochemistry or, you know, some other means. These tumors are very different from one another. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, different um, morphologic features, different outcome implications, but we can actually uh, use four principles to better understand these lesions. And these four, uh, four principles are distinction, documentation, overlap, and expansion. Let's take a look at those four principles. The first principle is distinction, which means molecularly defined renal carcinomas have distinct morphology. At least focally, those tumors will have what we call a signature, a hallmark morphologic um, uh, you know, uh, manifestation. In this um, papillary high-grade, high nuclear grade tumor, you can appreciate the prominent um, nucleoli with perinucleolar halo, which is a signature mark for fumarate hydatase renal cell carcinoma. But to diagnose fumarate hydatase deficient renal cell carcinoma, as I, as I told you, like as I told you, like two minutes ago, you need to document the mutation, and we have uh, some tools to do that. One of them is fumarate hydatase immunosochemical assay. As you can see, um, the normal um, uh, endothelial cells or stromal elements are expressing the fumarate hydatase although the tumor is entirely lost. So it's that documentation is needed to diagnose fumarate hydatase deficient renal cell carcinoma. The other thing is, and one of the most important uh, and problematic area is morphologic overlap exists, exists between different renal neoplasms. On the left side, you see TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma. On the right side, you see fumarate hydatase deficient renal cell carcinoma, and they can look a lot like each other. Lastly, and another problematic area is, so we are starting to understand these molecular defined renal carcinomas. Therefore, we don't have much data about them. And therefore, their morphologic spectrum keeps, keeps expanding in renal neoplasms, in molecular defined renal neoplasms. So uh, on the left side, you see TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma, somewhat classical appearance of this uh, you know, particular tumor. But on the right side, you see another TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma with, with um, you know, mostly looking like a eosinophilic low-grade tumor, or it can easily be one of those, you know, uh, succinate dehydrogenase deficient renal cell carcinomas. So the, their morphologic spectrum keeps uh, expanding, and we need to be very aware of that. So let's start with the TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma, and I'm going to use those four principles, um, you know, whenever we are talking about, about one of these entities. 
uh, distinction, documentation, overlap, and expansion. Here we go. So distinction, TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma is actually most common pediatric renal cell carcinoma at the moment. Uh, it is basically 40% of renal cell carcinoma, but please be um, careful about this statement because the most common tumor in pediatric patients is not renal cell carcinoma. Renal cell carcinoma are actually relatively rare. But when you, when you are dealing with a renal cell carcinoma in a pediatric patient, it is most likely a TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma followed by papillary renal cell carcinoma. In adults, it is a fraction of renal cell carcinomas, but because the renal cell carcinoma is seen, is, is the most common malignancy as an umbrella in adults, actually adult TFE3 rearranged carcinomas are more common than pediatric ones. Uh, it can present in any age, usually young adults, and uh, TFE3 translocation, the rearrangement of the TFE3 gene located at the uh, short arm of the X chromosome is the main event on this, um, in these tumors. It is the canonical event. And we are required to document that, as, as, as I told you. Uh, the problem is this guy has a lot of um, translocation partners and those translocation partners can impact morphology. We are going to see some examples and also it can impact the outcome. Uh, unfortunately, it is generally aggressive. Uh, for example, in pediatric patients, you can see a renal mass with lymph node metastasis. Normally, lymph node metastasis are not very common in renal cell carcinomas. For example, clear cell doesn't do much, but TFE3 rearrange uh, frequently does, uh, you know, higher lymph node metastasis. Uh, the outcome is as worse as clear cell. And some papers, uh, you know, claim that it is actually more, uh, you know, dangerous, aggressive than clear cell. Morphologic clues. So, when should we suspect clear um, TFE3 rearrangement cell carcinoma? First of all, uh, true papillary formation in a tumor with clear cell cytology should prompt us um, TFE3 rearrangement cell carcinoma. Papillary, true papillary formation, clear uh, cytoplasm, clear and uh, eosinophilic cells with abundant cytoplasm should prompt us to evaluate uh, that tumor, especially in a young patient, for example, less than 45 years age, uh, for 45 years of age. Uh, some momentous bodies are uh, kind of uh, overrated, in my opinion, in those tumors, because it's only seen in 30% of the tumors. But if you see them, uh, it, is, it can help you. Um, recently, uh, we uh, had a survey regarding, you know, um, the look and the diagnosis of TF3 rear entry cell carcinomas. It was a multinational uh, cohort. And we found that, uh, that by the way, the survey attendees were all expert uh, urologic pathologists. And we saw that papillary formation, light epithelioid cells with clear cytoplasm, li large epithelioid cells with azurgic cytoplasm, and more than one growth pattern were all, almost always there in terms of you know, uh, the uh, morphologic um, appearance of TFE3 rear entering cell carcinoma. Again, uh, true papillary formation, and you can see tumor cells with abundant clear and eosinophilic cytoplasm. True papillae, clear slash eosinophilic abundant cytoplasm, especially in a younger patient, should prompt us to evaluate more. Documentation, again, TFE3 rearrangement should be documented, uh, documented and we have, uh, we have several ways to do that. One of them is uh, TFE3 immunosechemical assay. It's a problematic assay. You need to have diffuse, uh, strong positivity. It's a nuclear stain because TFE3 itself uh, produces a translocation factor. But uh, many labs can't do that because of the fixation sensitivity on this protein. Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't work well, especially with the automated stains. And um, it's a, it's a well-established problem in that uh, immunosochemical assay. So that's why most people don't do, don't use it. Um, but let's say you are in a limited um, a limited resource setting as most of us are. And let's say you need, um, you know, you have suspicions about this case, you can try uh, several immunosochemical assays that are widely available in the world. One of them is uh, cytokeratins. In the vast majority of the uh, renal cell carcinomas, uh, cytokeratins are usually positive. I, I, when I say cytokeratin, I mean, uh, you know, pancytokeratin, EMA. Those, those guys are usually positive in renal cell carcinomas, but in uh, TFE3 rearranged cell carcinomas, they are either negative or under expressed. 
The other one is keratin-7. In papillary tumors, when you see keratin-7, actually in all, all papillary tumors, I'm not just talking about TF3, but in all papillary tumors, you should you should be suspicious of a molecular defined renal, renal carcinoma when you have a keratin-7 negativity. In this tumor, keratin-7 is negative. Uh, CA9, um, it is almost always patchy. I'm saying almost always because uh, because there's always there are always exceptions, but you know, CA9, uh, well, you are dealing with a clear, you know, tumor with mostly clear cell cytoplasm, right? If you do uh, CA9, if it is not diffuse, strong, and membranous positivity, you shouldn't call it clear cell. I mean, you shouldn't comfortably call it clear cell. Some tumors may also have melanistic markers, HMB45, melan A, MART1, but it, it depends on the uh, translocation partners. That means TF3 RCC does not have to be always possible with, uh, you know, uh, melanistic markers. CA9, again, uh, it, it can be patchy positivity. This, this is by, uh, from uh, Dr. Sean Williamson at CCF. Uh, you might have uh, patchy positivity. Uh, do, not fool, you know, let, do not let that fool you. Uh, it may it doesn't have to be a uh, clear cell. Catepsin cake may also be helpful. Resumes is variable. Resumes is never the most important answer in any kidney tumor, by the way. Uh, Catepsin K is uh, can be diffused positive in translocation of switching cell carcinomas, but can also be negative. So uh, you should keep that in mind. The gold standard test is uh, uh, fluorescent in situ hybridization, fish testing, and we use a uh, break apart probe probes because TF3 has multiple uh, partners. So as long as you see the, uh, you know, break apart in that in the TF3 gene, uh, that, that's the documentation. Uh, but the documentation has some issues as well. First of all, uh, there is um, something we call um, cryptic translocations. So in the same chromosome, the arrangement happens and some of the probes may not be able to catch that. Uh, there, and there are some uh, partners uh, who are doing, in, you know, uh, cryptic interchromosomal inversion. Uh, we have RBM10, we have RBMX, group of one, no, no, and so on. There is, it is, there is like increasing list of those genes. And unfortunately, some uh, most likely traditional probes may not be able to catch that. Um, another problem is, um, Another problem in the fish is the uh, threshold cutoff level. So the cu cutoff level is different from institution to institution. Some institutions say ten uh, percent. Some 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 institutions say twenty percent. Some say thirty percent. Unfortunately, there is no gold standard threshold for TF3 rare renal cell carcinoma, and we do have low um, signal level renal cell carcinomas, and uh, we don't know. Uh, what they are. If you have any of those, please let me know because I'm planning to collect some of those uh, cases and uh, make a project. Anyway, so I told you different uh, fusion partners may impact morphology and there's an amazing paper. If you really want to understand TF3 rearranging cell carcinomas, you should read this paper. It was published by Dr. Argani and friends uh, at American Journal of Search Path in 2016. It is an amazing paper. It tells you how uh, TP3 uh, fusion variant impacts uh, morphology. Uh, for example, in this example, uh, Nono is the uh, trans translocation partner in this in this case, and you can see it it is it almost looks like clear cell slash clear cell papillary, and catepsin K is negative. In the other example. There is PRCC TF3. It is uh, one of the most common translocations, by the way, in TF3. TF and if you see uh, a tumor that is very similar, it can easily be confused with um, uh, papillary cell carcinomas. And these tumors, the you know TF3 rearranged tumors with PRCC translocation, they actually have uh, all of them uh, have catepsin K expression. So again, I told you the not only the morphology but the immunoprofile can impact can be impacted by the uh, fusion partner. Another, two, another uh, translocation is SFPQ. It is the second most common, uh, the translocation in TF3. And as you can see, look at this tumor. It, it almost like, uh, it, it is almost diagnostic of clear cell papillary renal tumor, which is now a benign tumor and that, that's a problem. So we should be really careful if you, if you are, you know, looking at a tumor that has uh, multiple different growth patterns. That's a very important clue for TF3 
rare entering cell carcinoma. If you have a focal, uh, you know, clear cell papillary renal tumor like areas, just do not do not jump into conclusion. And when you stain those tumors, it, it will not be uh, positive with CA9 and it will not be positive with CK7. So clear cell papillary renal tumors should be both positive for CA9 and um, yes, uh, CK7, right? So uh, don't, you know, um, don't uh, fall into that trap. Um, overlap. So we have a tumor on the, on the left side and we have a tumor on the right side and they are totally different tumors. And, but I mean, if you look at the, um, you know, the morphology, they are almost always identical, like, you know, almost identical tumors. But on the right side, we have clear cell and cell carcinoma with pinkish tumor cells. And uh, due to uh, sloughing off the central areas in clear cell, you might have pseudopapillae. Uh, and it's a clear cell on the right side, it's a TFE3 rearranged uh, renal cell carcinoma. So uh, there, you will have some problematic cases um, and morphologic clues and immuno profile will be very important in your diagnosis. And again, CA9 will be very helpful uh, in terms of you know, the diagnostic approach in clear, uh, tumors with clear cell cytology because uh, clear cell renal cell carcinoma is 99.99% diffusely and strongly and membranous positive for uh, CA9, whereas TF3 will never do that, almost never do that. And these are the uh, different uh, differential slash overlaps. Uh, you know, that those tumors you see, clear cell papillary tumor, FHRCC, ELOC RCC, epithelioid AML, they can look, uh, TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinomas can look like those tumors. So just uh, keep that in mind. And expansion. Uh, we continue, uh, you know, finding new morphologic um, face of the TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma. One of them is actually recently identified, again, doc, with Dr. Dr. Pedro Margani. Dr. Argani is probably the leading researcher, leading pathologist in TFE3 rare engine cell carcinomas. And they found that MET15 translocation is actually associated with a morphology that is almost identical with multilocular cystic neoplasm of low malignant potential, which is a benign entity. It is a very, very scary situation. So the second tumor is TFEB altered renal cell carcinoma. If you, uh, if you pay attention, I'm not talking about rearrangement, I'm talking about alteration because we have two different changes. One of them is the rearrangement and the other one is amplification. And we are going to talk about uh, talk about those. Um, not as common as TFE3. Uh, rearrangement can be mostly seen in young age. It looks, it is uh, the epidemiology of the TFE3 rearranged, sorry, TFE B rearranged renal cell carcinoma is similar to TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma. You know, young, young pediatric patients so, or young slash pediatric patients. They are very um, rare though. I mean, TFE3 rearranged and amplified renal cell carcinomas are rare. Uh, amplification can be seen in any age. So depending on the, on the event, like it, it, it can be either rearrangement or amplification, the morphology may differ. In, in this uh, picture, again, it was by, from Dr. Williamson. Uh, you see, um, a biphasic cell population. One of them is uh, the, you know, clear cell RCC-like uh, cells. And there is also small, um, more pycnotic looking hyperchromatic cells uh, forming um, a rosette-like structure in basement membrane-like material. So basically you have biphasic cell population. It's a very characteristic of uh, TFEB rearranged renal cell carcinoma. Again, uh, on higher power, you can see those uh, smaller cells uh, and you can see the basement membrane material. They are, and they are trying to form some, you know, what we call like rosette. Um, whereas TFEB amplified renal cell carcinoma has a wild, wild spectrum of heterogeneity, but mostly they are very high grade tumors and they can show a lot of different morphology. But in the end, they are usually oncostic, high-grade papillary tumors. Uh, you will see, you will appreciate, you know, high nuclear-grade uh, cytology, and you will appreciate at least focally uh, papillary uh, uh, growth pattern. Again, uh, papillary growth pattern, on, uh, oncostic tumors, and high-grade uh, nuclear-grade will be seen 
in at least focally in TFEB amplified renal cell carcinomas. Um, like TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma, the cytokeratins will be underexpressed or keratins. This is one of my cases that I uh, signed out uh, last year. Uh, you can see the trapped the normal kidney tubules uh, are good positive controls for pancytokeratin. And this is MART1. Um, uh, both TFEB rearranged renal cell carcinomas and TFE3 rearranged carcinomas will almost always express melanistic markers. Uh, it can be focal, but they will. It will be there. Uh, melanistic markers like you know H again HMB45, melanA, uh, catepsin K. Uh, will be positive. So I put keratin 20 question mark because uh, recently um, we have identified, uh, and when I say we, Dr. Williamson is leading a project right now. She, he is collecting TFEB amplified renal cell carcinomas and substantial amount of them will express uh, some CK20. Uh, it is one of my cases that I contributed to that uh, cohort. Uh, again, and you, you can see that there's a CK20 positivity. Uh, for documentation, again, you have to uh, document the, uh, the molecular event. And TFEB IHC will be uh, helpful for both TFEB amplified and TFEB rearranged renal cell carcinoma because both events will uh, cause overexpression of TFEB um, uh, amplification, uh, TFEB overexpression. But uh, FISH is gold standard. Uh, rearrangement or amplification, you know. And this is a nice example of uh, break apart, uh, you know, a break apart signal uh, showing the uh, uh, rearrangement. So overlap, there are tons of overlaps in uh, this uh, group of tumors with other tumors. One of them is, uh, you know, biphasic papillary squamate renal cell carcinoma is a subtype of papillary renal cell carcinoma. They also have biphasic uh, cell population. Uh, like TFEB rearranged renal cell carcinoma, and you may you may confuse you know the two. The other one is TFEB amplified renal cell carcinoma can show uh, very prominent nucleoli, and you can easily mistaken mistaken them with uh, FHRCs because FHRCs is also mostly oncostic, and it is all, uh, mostly uh, papillary. So, you know, there there are a lot of overlap. Uh, by means of overlap and expansion, we don't have much uh, data about TFEB amplified renal cell carcinoma, carcinomas, and here are different uh, morphologic patterns of one single tumor. It is one of the one of the cases that I signed out last year, and all of those, uh, you know, snapshots, these all of them were from one single tumor. That's that was crazy. Another tumor is ALK rearranged renal cell carcinoma. These are very rare, uh, high-grade tumors, mostly high-grade tumors. And uh, it's a very interesting um, entity because they are also associated with uh, pediatric patients and also associated with hemoglobinopathies. Actually, not all renal cell carcinomas arising uh, in the background of uh, hemoglobinopathy are renal medullary carcinomas. You can actually have ALK rearranged renal cell carcinomas. And um, there is targeted treatment for ALK RCC, and it should be very important for the patient, you know. And uh, they will be, they will almost always be very aggressive disease like renal medullary carcinoma. And in this very nice paper from 2016, Dr. Kajeva et al. Uh, had, um, uh, you know, six uh, kids with ALK rearranged renal cell carcinomas. Three of them had uh, hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin S trait, and all of them had the same translocation, um, v VCL ALK translocation. Whereas there were three patients with non hemoglobin with, without hemoglobinopathy, and it has TMP3 uh, ALK uh, rearrangement. If I'm not mistaken, TMP, TMP3 should be the most common, <coughs> excuse me, translocation in these tumors. ALK RCC is very rare, probably less than maybe 30 cases reported. And dif difficult to classify, but what you will have is high nuclear grade uh, cells, stromal stromal mucin, and lymphocytic infiltrates. I know they are pretty non-specific, but you know if you have a tumor with a patient, um, if if the the tumor is renal medullary carcinoma like, and especially in the adults, hemoglobin hemoglobinopathy usually is not there. 
if you have such a tumor, think about alk RCC. A diffuse alk expression can help you. Again, you have to document the molecular alteration. So one of the things you can do is just you can uh, throw alk immunosochemical assay and it will be diffusely positive. Um, the alk RCC, uh, like other translocation associated renal cell carcinomas, will have multiple uh, translocation partners. And VCL, uh, TMP3, EML4, and STRN are some of the many uh, chromosomal alterations. Uh, it's an awkward tumor. And when you have an awkward tumor with uh, TFE3 expression and alt positivity, uh, you should stop and think about alt RCC because some of the alt, some of the alt RCC can also express TFE3. Um, overlap uh, might be seen with mucinous tubular and spindle cell carcinoma, but again, mucinous tubular and spindle cell carcinomas will be usually low nuclear grade tumors. Usually, there are there are exceptions, but. Uh, but, you know, the uh, stromal mucin in all carcinoma may fool you, but uh, it shouldn't. The other thing is um, 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 mucinous tubular and spin cell carcinoma uh, will be ALK negative. So when you when you throw your ALK in terms, you know, if you have a question, it will be negative. Another tumor is, of course, mark one deficient uh, renal medullary carcinoma. But in these tumors, INI1 will be lost, whereas in all carcinoma, it will be uh, retained. So you can... Even in the limited resource setting, you can actually differentiate from, from one another. Expansion. Um, there's a scary, scary paper by Dr. Croda. And these are examples of ALK rearranged renal cell carcinomas, and they're all over the place. So you have rhabdoid looking cells. You have, uh, you know, what I could um, mistaken as uh, microcystic pigmented chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. You have papillary features. You have, you know, low-grade eosinophilic features. Again, all career and renal cell carcinomas can have a huge spectrum of morphology. And another thing in this paper is uh, they actually identified one or two cases. I don't remember the exact number, but they actually, one of the all career and renal cell carcinomas actually looked a lot like metanephric adenoma. That's crazy. But again, it can happen. And there are things that you can do. Um, the, for example, first of all, ALK. The other thing is 95% uh, of, 90-95% of uh, metanephric adenomas will express BRAF uh, or will have BRAF mutation. So you can just throw the BRAF uh, mutation essay, I mean IHC, and you can actually uh, spot spot that. But again, there are there are some scary uh, uh, overlaps uh, with ALK, RCC, and other tumors. Another tumor, it is one of my favorite renal cell carcinomas at the moment. Uh, fumarate type test deficient renal cell carcinoma. It was formerly known as uh, hereditary lyomyomatosis and renal cell carcinoma associated renal cell carcinoma um, because it was first identified in that syndrome. But now we know that there are a lot of uh, sporadic cases as well. You don't need a germline mutation to have uh, fumarate type test deficient renal cell carcinoma. They are usually seen young age, especially in patients with uh, hereditary condition. But you know it can be seen in any age. And uh, as we as we start talking about the morphology clues, uh, very prominent nucleoli with uh, a nuclear halo is our uh, hallmark event. They are mostly eosinophilic tumors, but you can have some clear cell areas as well. Uh, and they mostly um, they mostly uh, present papillary formation, at least focally. So papillary tumor, very uh, uh, you know prominent nucleoli. They call it viral inclusion-like, you know, nucleoli. Uh, it should be your morphologic clue to, you know, further evaluate if there is FHRCC. Uh, multiple growth patterns, but mostly tubular papillary and again, Kirby forming. Uh, you might you might have uh, salt and cystic features as well. And, but again, almost always papillary formation, high nuclear rate, prominent nucleoli, perinucleolar halo. This is my personal opinion at the moment. I don't have any evidence, but I believe fumarate type test deficient RCC is way more common than, common than TFE3 rearranged RCC. Uh, I believe there is a lot of uh, underdiagnosis uh, going on for FHRCC. Probably we have been calling them uh, unclassified, you know, high-grade unclassified tumors. But uh, please keep that in mind. I mean, I believe FHRCC, and this is personal opinion. I don't have any evidence, but I think they are very, very common. At least common than TFE3 RCC. And uh, they have other 
you know, morphology features. It can show more, uh, microcystic uh, appearance. It can show solid appearance. Um, but again, those nuclei should be your, um, you know, main morphology clue. Documentation. We have two very important immunosochemical assays. Uh, FH is becoming more and more available in many labs, but 2AC is not, and 2AC is the more important one, and I'm going to tell you why. So FHRCC uh, should be diffusely negative with FH, and you should have a very nice internal control of normal cells, you know, because your FH IAC may not work, and the entire thing may be negative, and you can um, have a, a, you know, um, false positive case. Uh, please, uh, you know, don't forget to look at your internal and, and your external controls to, uh, you know, call the shot. The other thing is uh, 2AC is a byproduct of the mutation itself. Um, it is overexpressed in FHRCC, but, and it's a very important but, when, when there is fumarate hydratase deficient renal cell carcinoma, the overexpression, the signal should be both nuclear and cytoplasmic. If you have just cytoplasmic expression, it is not enough, and we see that. In high-grade tumors, in high-grade renal cell carcinoma, with a suspicion of fumarate renal cell carcinoma, if you throw to a C, you can have focal cytoplasmic expression. It is like beta-catenin. Think about like beta-catenin. Like, you know, in beta-catenin, beta you can have a signal, cytoplasmic signal, but it doesn't mean it is positive, right? Or myogen. Likewise, 2SC should be nuclear and cytoplasmic positive. Um, most of us will not have both of, those, both of those two immunosochemical assays in our labs, but one of the things you can do is screening. Again, uh, as I told you in the beginning of my talk, if you have a weirdo tumor, papillary, and if it is cytokeratin 7 negative, think about molecular. It's a, it is another uh, personal opinion. Uh, it is kind of my algorithm, but uh, if there is a negative CK7 and a high-grade papillary tumor, you should uh, rule out uh, molecular defined renal carcinomas. Um, 2SC is uh, probably more specific to fumarate uh, deficient RCs. And I had a case last year. It was a cystic mass in a patient and um, in an elderly patient. And I, because of this morphologic clue, you know, look at these amazing, um, you know, nucleoli prominent nucleoli and uh, high grade cytology. The, that case also had some rhabdoid features. And I ordered FHRCC, we, we don't have those in our lab. We have, um, I have to I have to send it out. And FH was retained, but 2SC was also positive and nuclear positive. So you, you might have that. Eventually this case went to, uh, you know, uh, sequencing and we also uh, confirmed the FH mutation, but you might have that uh, occasion. Overlap, FHRCC can look like anything. Was there any question, by the way? No? Well, you can you can ask the questions at the end of the talk. Anyway, so FHRCC can be um, can can look like TFE3 rear range RCC. FHRCC can look like tubular cystic RCC, and it is actually a very important uh, lesson, uh, particularly from I mean I I learned that lesson from one of my uh, from one of my mentors in MD Anderson. So uh, tubular cystic RCC by definition is tubular cystic, and it has uh, always it has almost always grade three nuclear grade three uh, nuclei so and due to their overlap uh, you should rule out uh, FHRCC because FHRCC can have can be really aggressive whereas tubular cystic RCC is usually very indolent um, FHRCC should also be in the differential of high grade ugly guys you know high high grade high nuclear grade tumors where you can see what you can see is basically a very poorly differentiated um, adenocarcinoma. Think about FHRCC, like you should think about renal medullary carcinoma, collecting that carcinoma, and all CARCC. Uh, recently, uh, we, we found a case and we published very recently, it, it is in April, a fumarate deficient renal carcinoma with diffuse covering and had S9 expression. So overlap continues even with the immunoprofile. I, I want to say never say never. Because you know, I told you that TFE three renal cell carcinomas are almost always patchy CA nine, but I mean, in this scenario, a very real case, live case of mine, we uh, you know 
found a diffusely positive CA9 uh, expressing FHRCC, and we confirmed that with the you know um, um, FH and RCC. And I, when we were you know preparing this case for for the report, we found that it is actually well known. So you might have CA9 expression in um, uh, in FHRCC. You might also have GATA3 expression in uh, FHRCC. It is actually very high rate. Like I think 60 to 70 percent of them may express GATA3 in FHRCC. So in a very ugly adenocarcinoma, one of the differential is actually urothelial carcinoma. So if you are dealing with a very ugly kidney tumor, don't forget to order FHRCC, even though you have positive GATA3. So please be careful. Uh, this is another figure uh, regarding uh, GATA3 expression in renal, renal leoplasms. I just wrote a nice editorial with Dr. Sanger and Dr. Williamson to International Journal of uh, Urology, uh, Patholo sorry, International Journal of um, Surgical Pathology. Uh, and you can see that many entities, many uh, kidney entities can actually have somewhat variable, you know, um, uh, GATA3 expression. FHRCC, look at this, Mike, more than almost half of it will have um, uh, uh, GATA3 expression. Another problem with the FHRCC is they can actually show distinctive low-grade oncocytic uh, low-grade features. Like if you, uh, this paper is actually a nightmare scenario. You have a low-grade eosinophilic tumor. It doesn't look like uh, many things. You are even considering a, a, a SDH uh, deficient RCC and voila, you have um, a low-grade FHRCC. So please uh, keep that in mind. The weird things can happen. Another entity in this group is succinate dehydrogenase deficient renal cell carcinoma. Um, it is actually a very rare um, tumor. And it is seen in mostly in young adults. And it, uh, when you find a kidney tumor, and if you confirm a stage RCC, it is almost always, probably always, germline mutation. So there's a there's a hereditary condition going on. Uh, most of the patients, I mean, the classical scenario is young patients with hypertension due to paraganglioma somewhere in their body uh, because because of the hereditary condition. So a stage deficient RCC is. Um, almost always, probably always uh, germline mutation. So you shouldn't miss that uh, case. Morphologic clues, the main hallmark is actually low-grade eosophic tumors with uh, inter and intracytoplasmic uh, vacuoles. And those vacuoles would, would have um, pale flocculent material. And STHB IHC is a very nice immunostain. But you might have uh, you might have hue, even though uh, there is a STHB loss. So it is from WHO um, uh, fifth edition book. You can actually have some hue, and please don't you know uh, exclude STH deficient RCC if you have that uh, you know situation. Uh, keratin uh, keratin seven and. CD117 is, is uh, one of the most important immunohistochemical assays in tumors with low-grade eosophilic cytology in kidney. You should use them, and they are usually both negative. So this is one of my algorithmic tables for low-grade oncocytic tumors in kidney. And if you have keratin-7 negativity and KIT negativity in a low-grade eosophilic tumors, think about molecularly defined renal carcinomas. Uh, and particularly a stage deficient RCC. And those other tumors might have those might have the same um, um, immunoprofile, but you should think about you know, molecular defined real carcinomas. And a stage deficient RCC can look like eosophilic chromophobe RCC, can look like oncocytoma, can look like LOT, uh, can look like eosophilic cell and cystic renal cell carcinoma, uh, can look like LOT, as I told you. And expansion-wise, uh, it is well known. I mean, I think it's been 10 years since Dr. Jill uh, published this paper. It is well known that you can actually have high-grade SDHB RCCs. Uh, I have a friend in Hungary, uh, Dr. Levente Kuti. He actually has two cases of SDH deficient RCC, both uh, immunoprofile and molecularly proven. And uh, those tumors can those tumors look exactly like FHRCC 
you know, familiarize dynasty, but they are STH deficient. So um, as you can see, you can have high grade papillary tumors, uh, in, you know, in the in the form of STH RCC. A lock mutated renal cell carcinoma is the most problematic kidney tumor ever at this point, and I'm going to tell you why. And I intentionally put blank, you know, there's no image under documentation and under expansion, and I'm going to tell you why. So ELOC mutated renal cell carcinoma is one of the rarest subtypes of renal cell carcinoma, probably less than 20 cases reported. Uh, Dr. Mohanty has a very uh, vast experience. Uh, they uh, they um, uh, presented uh, in the last ASCAP, a very nice collection of ELOC mutated renal cell carcinomas, but main uh, morphologic clue is what we call renal cell carcinoma with lymphomatocytoma. So you have uh, a tumor, with a cystic slash papillary slash tubular papillary features with elongated uh, clear cytoplasm and uh, stroma will be very like smooth muscle like uh, fibromuscular stroma and papillary formation and when you have that scenario like when you have a renal cell carcinoma with fibromatosotroma there are several possibilities one of them is clear cell papillary renal tumor. Another one is actually clear cell renal cell carcinoma. You might have focally fibromatosotoma like areas. Another one is uh, patients with uh, tubular sclerosis. They can actually have renal cell carcinoma with fibromatosotoma with mTOR mutations. And that those patients have a specific uh, type of tumor, you know, but it is uh, just, um, it should, that diagnosis should be limited to um, patients with tubular sclerosis. And we, have, we also have a log RCC. Um, why is that tumor pretty problematic? Because if you are dealing with clear cell papillary renal tumor, you can do CA9, keratin 7, uh, and you will find your answer. Most of the get, most of the clear cell papillary renal tumors are actual get 3 positive. Please do not forget that. You know, if you have a, especially a biopsy in a patient with a clear cell uh, tumor in the kidney. And it, it, if your suspicion is clear cell papillary renal tumor, throw a GATA3. Clear salt is never positive, almost never with, I mean, I, sh I shouldn't say never, but again, almost never positive with GATA3. But about 85, 80, 85 percent of clear cell papillary renal tumor will express uh, GATA3. Uh, in, the, in the patients with tubular sclerosis as well, tubular sclerosis history will be important. ELOC RCC, my friends, can only be diagnosed by NGS unfortunately, because it will have similar features. It will be, it will express CA9. It will express keratin 7. It may express GATA3. We don't know. Uh, it may express CD10. It may express racemase. Uh, unfortunately, neither morphology nor immunoprofile um, will help you. And there's no FISH studies uh, developed yet. You can only diagnose elocarsis by NGS. And that's the, that makes this tumor the most problematic tumor in, in, at the moment. Okay, so these are the um, uh, molecular defined uh, renal tumors. And I know uh, your mind is looking like a hurricane at the moment. There, I, I gave you a lot of information. So how can I catch these, catch these tumors in the limited setting? So first of all, we should know the most common kidney tumors. And the most common tumors is still and has been for the last 30 years, clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Whatever we do, no matter how many different uh, subtypes we have, clear cell renal cell carcinoma will be the most common tumor. It will be followed by papillary renal cell carcinoma. And the, the um, incidence, the 15% doesn't change much. There are a lot of changes in PRCC. We didn't talk in this. We didn't have, uh, I didn't explain about the changes, but you know, um, still papillary renal cell carcinoma will be still 15%. Uh, chromophobe renal cell carcinoma will be 5%. It will be followed by oncocytoma, TFE3, renal cell carcinoma, and others. Again, um, uh, common things will become. If you see an awkward tumor, and, and I, when I say awkward, you know, morphologically not recognizable, or you, you don't, I mean, there are some areas that you can't fit into any entity, like clear cell, chromophobe, oncocytoma, you are not, you feel like you are dealing with a different animal. Think about molecular. And you should uh, make your thresh threshold very low in that scenario, especially in tumors with high-grade cytology and papillary. And uh, in my own opinion, CK7 expression, I mean, lack of CK7 expression. 
And this is a small, you know, uh, summary slide in tumors with clear cell cytology, uh, throw a CA9 in keratin 7. Many of us have that. And followed by some other immunostains. If you have an eosinophilic kidney tumor, throw uh, CD117 and keratin 7. If you have a papillary tumor, throw a keratin 7 in racemase. And with this uh, algorithm, very, very brief and easy and mostly available uh, workup, you can actually diagnose 90% of uh, renal cell carcinomas. And as long as you keep yourself updated, when you are dealing with a weird scenario, when you are dealing with an awkward tumor, you, you will know that you will you have to you know go down on the route of molecular defined renal carcinomas. And this is my last slide. Uh, and I uh, urge you to take a look at the uh, WHO classification of tumors. I think it is the best source ever for kidney tumors. I can't tell the same thing for the other, um, you know, uh, urinary and male genital system, but for kidney tumors, I think it is the best source. There are other uh, reviews and uh, other articles uh, that you can use to uh, enrich your knowledge on this, um, you know, topic. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me, and I'm happy to uh, take any questions uh, or any feedback. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mahmoud, and it's a very, very extensive, and you basically touched up on everything. So, so I have a few points, I mean, a couple of questions to ask. I mean, I'll ask that at the end. So let's have others to ask. Anita, can you unmute everyone? Uh, yeah, sure, sir, doing it. Yeah, please. And in the meanwhile, there is a question uh, from one of the attendee. How would you advise the genetic warding, generic warding when morphologic features for molecularly defined RCC may be present? But uh, the worker for the molecular mutation may not be done due at your mm -hmm. center uh, mm -hmm. because either do, do you do not have the test or the stains. Mm -hmm. I, well, I, I'm working in a very limited setting, actually. We don't have FH, we don't have 2AC immunosochemical assays. Um, what I say, what I sign out this case is like, I uh, give a morphologic definition, for example, clear cell carcinoma, uh, sorry, renal cell carcinoma with papillary features or clear cytology and papillary features. Uh, if I am really suspicious about something, I can also, you know, uh, word the diagnosis, for example, Renal cell carcinoma with clear and papillary features consistent with uh, TFE3 rear end renal cell carcinoma. And I say that, and as a, as a second line, I always say pending uh, further studies for definitive classification. As long as you do that, that's, they are okay with that. Thank you. Thank you, Mamut. The next one is by Dr. Hina Ayub Ansari. What is your approach on neoplastic renal core biopsy samples? Uh, it's a it's actually by itself a different topic for talk. I can tell I can have a talk for two hours on this. Uh, you should be more specific. But I am very uh, conservative. For example, I don't call oncocytomas uh, in in the biopsy. Some of the faculty does. I don't do that. Cool. Thank you. And Seema, do you have any question or comments? Luca, uh, thank you yeah, very much yeah. for your. Uh... Excellent presentation, uh, Mamut. Um, Luca, yes, yes. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear. You. Yes, yes. Uh, how many, how many uh, uh, renal uh, carcinomas do you send out uh, in uh, uh, one year for uh, um, more have... uh, expert uh, consultations? Okay, for um, so for expert consultations, it is not very common, but I can tell you I am suspicious of uh, molecularly defined renal carcinomas in about ten percent of the um, nephrectomies we have in a year. Some of them okay. comes out as um, you know uh, a molecular defined renal carcinoma. Some of them are basically renal cell carcinoma classified. There are very rare, like <laughs> I I sent. Um, I, MSK is very close to us, so I, I tend to send uh, my cases to Memorial Sloan Kettering or sometimes okay. Cleveland Clinic. 
uh, I think every year I, I send two or three cases. Okay, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Koshal? Hi, excellent presentation as always. Um, very nice. All Thanks points. So yeah, all points very nicely highlighted. My, uh, I have one question and one comment. So the question is regarding the TFE three uh, rearranged altered uh, RCCs with triptic inversion. So in that scenario, uh, what would be an ideal panel considering TFE IHC not very specific? What will be the kind of supportive panel along with IHC which can you know give a clue that probably is going to be TFE rearranged or altered RCC? Dakusha, I will talk about uh, the TFE three rearranged renal star with uh, cryptic. Uh, yes, cryptic inversion. Yeah, cryptic inversion. So, in the paper on this RBMX paper, if I remember correctly, RBM ten paper, if I remember correctly, they can look like a clear cell papillary tumor. You know, they can they can look like like NO NO. And um, if you are really suspicious, you should pursue uh, sequencing. And I think there is another, I'm not a molecular pathologist, but I think there are other uh, means of um, uh, uh, detecting fusion. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Detecting, you know, specific fusions. Yes, I, yes. You can there go are for different PCR, probes that you yes. can use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can for sequencing, I agree. Right. Yeah. And uh, comment regarding ALK uh, RCC, we've seen a couple of them uh, in the last few years, and I totally agree with you. They can really, really you know, spin you off with their uh, morphology. What I observe in my, this thing, observation, uh, mucin in the background is a very strong hint. They can mm -hmm. easily mimic, as you show in the paper, uh, easily mimic from very high grade to very indolent and can really uh, spin you off. And, so uh, uh, you're saying that the stromal mucin is almost uh, almost yeah, always there. Almost, almost always there. And mm -hmm. sometimes it really mimics MTSC also, so much mucin. But it turns out okay, to be so picked up, yeah, picked up very nicely on IHC, and in uh, this thing mm -hmm. you can also go for sequencing. Wonderful presentation. Thanks so much. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? I'll I can be here for half an hour. <laughs> it's cool, up cool. to you guys. Thank you, Mahmoud. Like it was really excellent, and thanks for ac accepting and getting everyone know the excellent work you are doing. So uh, as Seema said regarding the resemblance of mucinous tubular or at least the mucin in the stroma with ALK, we recently had a case, Ekta has the case, I was the secondary person in that, one of our senior pathologists, and it was beautifully ALK positive, but initially it was diagnosed outside as mucinous tubular spindle cell, we got it as a consult. And uh, nuclear grade was high though. So mm. that was, uh, and secondly, regarding uh, what to do, like a fish versus for cryptic translocations. Um, I mean, we probably had a conversation in, during our SCAP. So NGS is a gold standard and also people are coming with the mRNA signature by doing uh, yeah. PCR uh, mm -hmm. because NGS is not available everywhere. Uh, so that could be the answer. Oh, one more thing. Um, uh, there are other um, potential um, Markers for translocation in cell carcinoma. They are not specific for a specific translocation, but right. uh, there's and uh, um, University of Michigan, Dr. Rohit Mera yeah, has, Rohit has a, a couple a, of an RNA ish yes. study. It, it is called Trim 63. Yes. It is uh, very, very specific for translocation associated with cell carcinomas, but uh, it, it will not tell you which translocation it is. Like it, it, it doesn't, it will not tell you whether it is a uh, TFE three or TFE B. Yeah, it is basically a product, a mRNA product, but it don't tell us yes. like which one. But that's a very good surrogate actually for. Yeah, it's a very nice uh, surrogate. The other one yeah. is uh, Johns Hopkins has another, and uh, I think it's an IHC stain. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might be fish as well, but there is one. Uh, it is very specific for all tumors with mTOR mutations. Yes, and I mean Tamara is doing that. I mean, we yeah, all are there in that. We all there is a um. Yeah, but, TSC2, uh, TSC2 antibody, TSC1, TSC2. There is something, uh, it, it starts with G, I forgot the name, but yeah, that's, then, that's so TF2, I mean, translocation associated with cell carcinomas have close relationship with mTOR pathway. You can yes. actually use mTOR uh, inhibitors to tr 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 uh, treat uh, translocation associated with cell carcinomas. Because of that, uh, that trans translocation, uh, I mean, TF3 rearranged and TFB rearranged will alter 
mTOR pathway. So any mTOR mutated tumor will have that expression. So they use mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, marker, but I, I don't have any experience on that. Yeah, I, I saw those pictures um, because we had a conference call and looked at the cases. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. like heavily positive in the uh, TFE reagents tumors. Yeah. Anandi, do you have any question? I think C is doing a lot of renal pathology. Anyone from the group like, so we have a lot of people. So anyone from the group has any question for Dr. Agul? Uh, can I ask one question? Sure, oh, definitely. Dr. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 100%. I am, yeah Please I'm Dr. Bindu from Cochin. Hi, yeah, Dr. Bindu, Dr. Bindu, how are you? I'm Dr. Bindu from Cochin. Amrita, yeah. Uh, sir, I had a papillary, uh, a, a tumor in the kidney with papillary architecture, high-grade nuclear features. Uh, it was uh, cytokeratin 7 positive and TTF1 was strong nuclear positive. Any uh, the, Unfortunately, the patient did not have anything. I did a thyroglobulin that was negative. Um, the the patient did not have anything in the thyroid or any anything in the lung. It was purely a kidney tumor, but with a strong TTF one positivity. Interesting. There, was it was it positive with Paxate as well? Pardon? Was it positive with Paxate as well? Yes, Paxate was also positive. Interesting. I never I never ran into with I I, I never ran into that problem. Well, yeah. um, I'm. I'm writing my email address again. If you send me that uh, case with some images, I'll happy to. I'll be happy to help. If you send Pardon me some me, images, yeah. I, I, send, okay. I wrote my email address to the chat. You okay. Can, yeah, you can. Um, what was your name again, ma'am? I'm Doctor Bindu, sir. I'm Doctor okay. Bindu from Kochi. Yeah, Doctor Bindu. Yeah, just send me send me the um, uh, you know, send me your email address, and I, I'll be happy to help. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, yeah, Luca. Luca, Luca has a question about the previous cited marker. Yeah. Yeah. GPNMB. Thanks, Luca. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is the is the one that I um, I was trying to remember. Yes. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. That that oh, marker sir. is super non-specific, but it, it 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 will help you in the context. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question about SDHA deficient. Did you come across any SDHA mm. deficient? I have not. And I don't have much experience on that. I know that SDHB loss will be still seen on these yeah. tumors. Yes. SDHB is like a umbrella. Umbrella you thing, can yeah. Use. Yeah. And in addition, I don't have that experience. Yeah. Or... They saw like a lot of heterogeneous morphology. Uh, so yeah. that is one thing whenever we have this unusual tumor. Mm -hmm. And regarding this TTF one, somebody else also asked me, I, I haven't gotten a chance to see those slides, but yeah, it would be nice if you can, uh, Dr. Bindu, if you can send it to us, uh, mm -hmm. we can look at Pardon, it. Sir? Uh, same, if you can same. send some pictures of that case, yeah. the morphology, yeah. yes, sir. Uh, we can. And uh, Dr. Agul's email address is there in the chat box. Okay, yeah. sir. So, yeah, or I can send it to you also separately okay, on WhatsApp. Sir. You can ping me, so oh. you can send it to us and we'll have a look at it. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello? Minakshi, you have any question? Yeah. Hi, Dr. Sambit. Hi, I have a small you? question uh, about uh, TFE3 uh, uh, tumors. Uh, how important is it to have a CK down-regulated or negative? Many, many times, like last week only, I had a clear cell RCC with the down-regulated CK. It was hardly positive in focal areas. And I did an EMA. Mm -hmm. It was positive. Viamentin was negative. But Clearly, morphologically, there was no evidence of any other. It was clearly a clear cell RCC on morphology. We just did I see. So you have a tumor on. with um, clear cell cytology, and yes, Wymentin yes. was negative, and you had focal kit expression. Is focal that what you CK, said? Yes, focal, very focal CK and very weak intensity. EMA diffuse positive, CK7 negative. CK7 was negative? Yeah, we did TFE3 and TFEB also. They both were negative. Did and you did you do fish or um, We don't have a fish for uh, TFP three, mm -hmm. so we haven't done that. Mm -hmm. How about CA nine? Did you do CA nine? CA nine was positive. Diffusely. Diffuse positive. Yeah. That's that's clear. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you CK have has, uh, if you have a clear cell tumor in the kidney. Okay. Uh, and if you have uh, CA nine diffuse, uh, strong and membranous expression. 
Hmm. Your differential diagnosis is clear cell, clear cell, and clear cell. Okay, I will you, just you tell you one more do. scenario. Uh, yeah, you, sorry, you, don't, uh, you don't even have to do anything else. Okay. There was a case uh, uh, diagnosed as papillary RCC. Mm -hmm. uh, I think last year, one year back. So patient presented, uh, we only uh, diagnosed it at our institute only. I'm from Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute in Delhi. So papillary RCC and then patient had a metastasis in supraclav node after a year. And it was mm -hmm. an undifferentiated morphology. So uh, that in that biopsy, it was CA9 positive diffusely. Mm -hmm. so the IHC was coming not like a papillary, but like a clear cell. I see. And there were just a few polygonal cells. We could not call it clear cell and morphology, but yeah, we just let it go like that. But it was few CA9. It was not like it just uh, just because of hypoxia. I see. So it was, it was a high grade yeah. papillary looking tumor it with was a uh, papillary CA9 expression. Yes. On, so, uh, on, uh, on metastasis, it was a solid. After that, on biopsy, it was a solid tumor. Hmm. But uh, I mean, now I have to see. Positive. I have to see those tumors, and if you send me those uh, tumors, I'll be happy to help. But mm -hmm. um, for again, in in my talk, I mentioned. Um, fumarate hydratase deficient renal cell carcinoma. Actually, um, Dr. Banyak from, which he was in Harvard, when he was a fellow, he published a nice paper on CA9, mm -hmm. uh, expre expressed tumors, and two out of eight uh, fumarate hydratase deficient RCC had uh, diffuse uh, CA9 expression. So mm -hmm. uh, if you have a very ugly looking uh, papillary kidney tumor, high, high nuclear grade, you know, um, so basically, uh, if you if you have a diffuse CA9, it doesn't mm -hmm. exclude FHR, FHRCC. Mm -hmm. For but we did the cell, FHA to SC also, but it was just an observation that CA9 can be a diffuse. You know, yes. Maybe, maybe, yes. maybe it was a small biopsy. That why, that's why it was showing Maybe. That. Yeah, maybe. So yeah. Was the tumor necrotic? No, on the metastatic side, it was a node. So it was just a nodal tissue with tumor. There was no necrosis. And there's always a possibility. I mean, it's a lower possible, but the, the patient may have another kidney tumor. It's possible. Yeah. We need to see the, mm -hmm. we need to see the, uh, you know, primary and metastatic site tumors to have, because, you know, to better help you. Because I have seen CA9 positivity in non-renal and non-clear cell hydrate yes. tumors with necrosis. Yes. Which is yeah, rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. does come with, you yeah. know, with necrosis it with the hypoxia in, thing yeah and it comes in biliary tumors yes also. yes seen that. uh there was a question can we share your initial isc panel suggestion for clear and papillary tumors yes you can yes that's the question can you just elaborate please mahmoud if it is possible uh, uh on what on this question, um, what are IHC yeah, panels? I said, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they can. Yeah. Hello. So I'm Dr. Rabia. So this is quest this question is posted by me. Uh, yeah, thank great. you so much for your talk. I found uh, the primary and secondary, you know, the initial IHC you have suggested for clear cell and then the secondary based on uh -huh. what the results are to be very, very helpful. And I run a WhatsApp group where I have uh, communication with a lot of pathologists. So I just wanted your permission to share uh, this material over there, if you allow. Wow, yeah, sure. Very, thank you. You, you guys can, you guys, uh, you can send um, my email, you can post the, my email address to them. Uh, I actually see a lot of uh, virtual consults in any day, like two or three of them. So I'll Great. be happy to help if, if you have any questions. Yeah. If you need those uh, panels, I can share my screen again, and you can. Sure. Did you did you capture that info or? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I took okay, a good. screenshot. Yeah. Correct. Of course. Of course. So Thank where are you so working, Doctor Abia? Huh? Uh, I'm okay. working in Pakistan, Lahore, as consultant. Oh, wow. Just okay. Hospital. Which yeah. which hospital? Doctor's hospital. Oh wow! Great, great. Welcome. I have done my training from um, Shokat Khanam. Oh, uh, wow. And uh, I've cleared my FRC path one as well. So now I'm preparing for FRC path Wow, two. very good. So if you have any question, please let us know. And mm -hmm. we have a huge group also. We can. We would love to include you. Please, I would um, love to be part of it. That would be yeah. great. Thank you. Please, yeah, please send us your number and your email oh. address if you're comfortable. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mahmoud. Like we have people from all over the place. We have from Europe, from Pakistan, from India. I saw a few from Dubai. 
so it was a great talk and if uh, i get any i think someone give me give me one second someone i think uh yeah, dr jacon girowa if i yeah, yeah. say it correctly she asked for the uh algorithm i'm i'm just gonna um yeah can you just open it so people can take screenshot I'll, I'll open it, yeah yeah i will right. open it now so medina is yeah, from uh, uzbekistan she rotated with us for two months very brilliant nice. girl nice yeah she's applying for a u.s residency oh nice yeah congratulations good luck so for um for dr ansari's question what is your approach on neoplastic kidney core samples you can actually use this uh, if you if it's a clear cell type tumor, order CA9 and CK7 and see what it is. If you have an eosophic tumor, order KIT and keratin 7 and see what it is. And you, if you have papillary tumor, uh, see you know order keratin 7 and uh, resumes and see what it is. Usually you will have an answer. Usually. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Actually, uh, I am working in a major. Uh, hospital but uh, as far as renal neoplasms are concerned we see very few of them uh -huh. so yeah, i had a core biopsy the other day and it was showing some cells with a clear cytoplasm and some with eosinophilic and mm -hmm. but the mri was uh, very definite that it was a uh, uh, rcc so i went ahead mm -hmm. and gave the gave a diagnosis out but of course uh, as far as detailed ihc is concerned we don't have that uh, um, if you well, keratin seven and uh, so these these um, uh, these IHC CA nine keratin seven kit is basically CA one seventeen and racemes are usually present in any lab. If you don't, I strongly suggest you get them. Like I, we are talking about four or five humorous things, and some carrot. I mean, everybody has keratin, right? So if you have those four or five uh, IHC, you can actually diagnose more than ninety percent of kidney tumors. And the tumor that you are describing is uh, making me thinking of chromophobe RCC because chromophobe is a biphasic tumor. You have clear cells and eosinophilic cells. I would order, I would do CK7 on this and kit. And if, if it is both positive, it is probably chromophobe. Um, okay, sir. I think I'll go back and try those out. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would be very interesting. Thank you so much, yeah, sir. That was really course. great great presentation you Thank can you take a that. few pictures and send it to dr gul also he has yes, already posted uh, you, can send, email. you can send me uh, your case to my email address i'll be happy to look at okay sir that's so nice of you thank you of so course. much of course with pleasure all right any other questions Silpi, you have any questions? Silpi and Anandi are kind of quiet, quietly listening. You have any question? Yeah. All Mark, right, guys. They're asking for your email address. I think they lost it somewhere. Again, just write, uh, it was uh, it was in the chat box, but I'll. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll let me just to... pull it. Let me just pull and copy and. Well, paste. actually, no. It's it's it is it was in my presentation as well. Let me okay. let me. Uh... Give me a moment, please. Okay. Well, this is the, the last the, uh, the last uh, line is my email address, akulm at amc.edu. Thank you, Mahmoud. Now um, um, I'll have Anita to speak a few words. Okay. Anita. 
Sure, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. It was indeed a very insightful and a very interesting session. We had a uh, several inter interactive questions and uh, question and answer sessions which are going on. So, uh, thank you, thank you so much for your time and giving us uh, this opportunity to have you as a speaker, sir. It was a really wonderful time. It's my it, it was my pleasure. Thanks so much. Yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Have a good day. Thank you, Mamut. Yeah, have a good day and thanks for everything. Thanks a lot. Yeah, uh, thank you all the participants for your active participation and involvement as well. Thank you so yeah. much. And please uh, share the um, certificates with all of them to their emails. Of course, okay. of course. The details regarding the certificate will be shared to all the registered participants' email ID by tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank yeah, you thank, so you. thank you. Thank you, sir.